as Network Television News celebrates 70 years, the news divisions can take pride in bringing the American public our first draft of history. The enemy struck across the length and breadth of South Vietnam. A plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center. Network News brought us iconic anchors and correspondents, many who started in radio like Edward R. Murrow, Walter Cronkite, Chet Huntley, and David Brinkley. This is an old team trying to learn a new trade. Good night, Chet. Good night, David. And good night for NBC News. And that's the way it is. The CBS Evening News was the first television network newscast airing on May 3, 1948, with Douglas Edwards at the news desk. Douglas Edwards, CBS News, New York. More news later on this station. Ladies and gentlemen, a good evening to you. NBC followed with its first host, John Cameron Swayze. And that's the story, folks. Glad we could get together. This is John Cameron Swayze saying good night. ABC started news with John Daly as its first MC. The term anchor arrived a few years later when CBS producer Don Hewitt first used that term with Walter Cronkite anchoring early television political coverage. Direct from our newsroom in New York, this is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. So much has changed in 70 years. The director of the School of Journalism at Troy University, Jeff Spurlock, reflects on the early days. When Network News first started Television News, there were only snippets each week, not every night. You might have 15 minutes on a Wednesday, 15 minutes on a Friday, some weekends, and that's what you got. Your main news source were newspapers. Tennessee State University professor Karen Dunlap says her first memories of Network TV News comes from her saying of Make Me See, that television news could tell a story. Network News let us see the things that we never really imagined, whether it was the beauty of the world from far out in space. Apollo 11, the beginning of man's greatest adventure. Whether it was distant places and cultures underneath the sea, or the beautiful things we never thought about that we would never see. But Dunlap, who for years served as the president of the Pointer Institute for Media Studies, says television news also made Americans witness things we did not want to see. It made us see children starving. It made us see the brutality of war. Three weeks after the offensive began, the firing still goes on. The ugliness of hatred, of anger. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. There were so many things that we would so easily avoid, but television network news made us see. Network News eventually expanded beyond 15 minutes. From our CBS newsroom in New York on this, the first broadcast of Network Television's first daily half-hour news program. The news director at WTVF Television, Sandy Boonstra, Nashville's CBS affiliate, discusses the impact of increasing news coverage. The newscast expanded, went to 30 minutes, and of course then you start adding commercials and figure we can make money off, and it just, the evolution of network news is really pretty fascinating. And you think about how much it changed. 70 years seems like a long time, but when you think about how far it's come, it's really not that long. The chief operating officer of the Museum Institute and the First Amendment Center, Gene Polisinski, says network TV news, especially CBS and NBC, had a strong run of anchors providing a focal point of attention that we can't duplicate today due to cable and satellite fragmenting the audience. You turn to one of those two places for your news digest, and they all had a trustworthy, usually white male guy. But at that point, the nation accepted that as the voice of God, if you will, on network news. So it was the national campfire. It was a place to get what was going on in the country and what was going to happen in the country in a way that was very unique. Jeff Spurlock says he grew up watching Walter Cronkite, David Brinkley, and Chet Huntley. They were the three staples as far as network news was concerned. And these three legends are no longer with us. But we've had so many other as reputable journalists since then. The journalists, they're great. And they're not newsmakers, they're news deliverers. And that's what we rely on is for them to tell us what's happening in our world. Other prominent anchors came along, including John Chancellor at NBC. This is John Chancellor. And Harry Reasoner at ABC. Closer to home, I have a new colleague to walk, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you, Harry. Well, tonight has finally come for me, and I'm very pleased to be with you, Harry, and with ABC News. And later I'll have a chance to comment on my new duties. By the 1970s, with CBS and NBC dominating the evening news ratings, ABC tried something new. 
the first woman to anchor the nightly news by pairing Barbara Walters with Harry Reasoner. And our newsmaker interview tonight by satellite is with the president of Egypt, Anwar Sadat. Dunlap says network news had a hand in helping us see ourselves. She saw network TV news come to the forefront and help society become more diverse and inclusive. You could tell by network news that it became clear that they weren't just reporting on it, but they needed to do that. And so you saw more women coming to the screen. Nine days after the explosion in Oklahoma City, you saw more people of color coming to the screens. In economic news today, the index of leading indicators. And those things were important to us because as we saw reporters who look like us, we began to see ourselves more comfortably in society. So they have reported on us, they have reported to us, and they have modeled for us. Network News brought more women into the newsroom, such as Diane Sawyer, Jane Pauley, and Connie Chung, who was the second female to anchor the evening news when CBS paired her with Dan Rather from 1993 to 1995. This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather and Connie Chung. From 2009 to 2014, ABC made Diane Sawyer its primary anchor, while CBS named Katie Couric the first female solo anchor of an evening newscast, a role she served from 2006 to 2011. It happened just a few moments ago. More people of color also joined network TV newsrooms, including Max Robinson, Bernard Shaw, and Ed Bradley. Ed Bradley, CBS News, the White House. From the early days to until recently, the networks always had long-term, recognizable anchors. NBC News at this hour, I'm Tom Brokaw. Tonight with Peter Jennings. This is the CBS Evening News, Dan Rather reporting. The anchors became faces we knew and people we trusted. With hundreds of viewing options, including other media platforms, Dunlap compares the Cronkite era versus today. And that's the way it is. There are some ironies as we look at the sort of anniversary of network news. And, and a big one is Walter Cronkite saying, as he signed off, that's the way it is. And nobody <laughs> seemed to want to argue. And that's not the way it is now. Television brought us together, television news, and a sense of confidence and trust in what we were seeing. And those two things aren't happening now. We're not being brought together by cable news, and we've lost trust. Gene Polisinski looks ahead. To me, the free press that will survive in the 21st century and the evening newscasts or network newscasts will better reflect America than they do now. Former television news manager Matt Miller says so much has changed since the days when Cronkite anchored and told you what happened that day. Miller says since everyone has instant news on their phones, today's news coverage involves a greater emphasis of putting stories in context. We're trying to tell you why it's relevant and why you should pay attention to it because you already know about it. It happened at 1 o'clock and now at 6 o'clock we're going to provide all this nuance for you and give you broader details so you can make better decisions based upon what's going on. Sandy Boonstra says changing technology over the years enabled TV news to offer better and faster news gathering. We gather news on digital cameras. We gather news on cell phones. Everything's about speed. It's just easier. And the quality is good. Good evening. We start tonight with the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Boonstra adds that while technology made news gathering easier, it has new challenges. There's all the talk about fake news and to verify sources and make sure that in your desire to get the news on quickly, you make sure that it's all correct and that you can trust the sources. And that's the thing that makes it a little tricky. First is good, but wrong is bad. <laughs> so you've got to be first and right. Network news ratings have declined and appointment TV is nearly gone. Boonstra says while planning the day's coverage, you have to assume people already know the news. So what are you going to give them that is different and relevant that they couldn't get someplace else? And I think people are still drawn to the people who are broadcasters who are delivering the news. So that can differentiate what you're doing. But I think that network news has to be where everyone is, and that's on their computer or their phone. And what they are experiencing now is, in fact, a taste of freedom. Matt Miller now works in talent acquisition for the EW Scripps group of TV stations. He says fake news has created challenges for journalists as we look to the future. We've got a tough road ahead of us in the next 10 to 15 years as far as regaining credibility, continuing to stay relevant, and finding new ways of reaching viewers of young kids that have never watched a TV newscast, and we have to provide content for them on the platforms they seek, digital and mobile. Miller says in newsrooms today, they talk about reporters changing from a role as information providers to becoming experts in the field. 
Back in the day, it would be your reporter that has the education beat. So you're just pitching education stories. Well, now you want an education expert so that when one o'clock in the afternoon, they've announced that $10,000 being trimmed from a school budget, we're not just reporting it. Our reporter who's an expert is going to tell us why this is so crucial. Gene Polisinski also sees a changing role for network news coverage. When's the last time you actually heard of something first over traditional media that you didn't already know from Twitter or a friend's feed? When they say breaking news, you almost always know what it is. Tell me why or who or more about it. That's going to be the trend in the future, I think, very different than we have now. And for the viewers, Karen Dunlap sees many taking news seriously again. So I think that there is a surge in confidence in the news and that would be primarily network news. And I think news media organizations are building on that. You can trust us and taking pains to be sure that they are trustworthy. Jeff Spurlock says network TV journalists have shown us historical moments from Watergate, Vietnam and assassinations to space travel and 9-11. We thank the journalists for that because they're the ones who brought it to the forefront. They brought it to America's households, and people are seeing this on their television set in their, in their living room as it's happening. Not happened last night, it's happening right now. And that's how far we've come since day one. News director Sandy Boonstra says true journalism exists, but the profession often battles a stereotype. The press is slammed a lot by our own president, even. I think that journalists have been given a bad rap in the world of entertainment, in movies, the way they're characterized. They're very stereotyped. And I think that there is so much good and true journalism still out there. And I think that some of the networks are still very, very good at it. Boonstra is proud of the type of journalism for which this country is known and the journalistic principles of holding the powerful accountable and giving a voice to the voiceless. I don't know that you necessarily would ever get that in other countries that just don't believe in that. And they don't want people to necessarily know what's behind the curtain. But I'm proud that we still do that, and I hope that we never change. The names and faces delivering the news over the years have changed. It's reported for us now by David Brinkley at NBC News, Washington. Today, the government produced before a press conference. Our major story tonight is that Agriculture Secretary Earl Butts has paid the price for telling an obscene racial joke. President Bush says Iraq has agreed to talk about the terms of a ceasefire. This has been a day of U.S. casualties in Iraq. What has not changed is the commitment by the networks to seek truth and report it as fully as possible, to not be influenced by those in power, and be honest, fair, and accurate. I'm Terry Likes. You're listening to Tennessee Matters on the Tennessee Radio Network.